Hi, two poems, both taken from Drake 3. At the end of the Second World War, my father brought a Parker pen back from Singapore for his father, a gift. After my grandfather died, the pen lay in state on my nan's sideboard. I knew I would get the pen eventually, that I would inherit it, but it took some while and some persuasion before my father was willing to let me use the pen. Brought back from Singapore, a gift to be handed down some day, bought at the fag end of a war you despised, on a private pay, pounds, shillings and pence the naffy hadn't swallowed up, the fountain pen, a parker, my brothers and I coveted, mine in all but name. A gift from son to father, and back again after he died, it lay at rest among her other relics, a porcelain plate, Chinese, four, his nest of pipes, another plate, this one embossed, as if to lead me into his rustic idyll. Wait, it will come to you in time, you said. In time it did, but with this censure, it stays where it is to keep it safe. Black barrel, silver cap, lever filled, ink drawn from a carof heavy well as blunt as murder. I stake my claim by gradual use, initials first, A.H., then signature, a flourish both grand and precise, in keeping, I thought, with a better life than mine, its cursive flow, the ease it would afford letter after letter, enough to open any door, if I could just perfect the art. Something about the feel of it between my fingers, the weight, how it seemed right to reflect before putting pen to paper. I retraced the paths I had taken, every step, but it was nowhere to be found, lying forsaken somewhere with the trust I would mislaid. You turned away from me, lost. There was nothing more to be said, only our silences betrayed the cost. A couple of pages further on, and we have Kite. My brother and I built a kite once. He was certain it was going to fly. I had severe doubts. <clears throat> on afternoons like this, the doors left wide open, the wind bullying the clouds across the sky, my mind turns to that kite we made together, a crate less inclined to fly than to crash, I thought, a crude bamboo cross lashed together with string and placed on the table while we prepared the skin, brown wrapping paper varnished and allowed to dry. Already it seemed too fraught, too highly strung to withstand what it must, those full-bodied, tub-thumping gusts of wind that raged outside, making a mockery of the garden. But we, no, I, was wrong. The kite soon found its airy element, translucent when it caught the sun. Never one to aim too high, I needed anchorage, terra firma, footholds more than fancy. Though I confess, once it took flight, like you, I felt the pull of some other language, a febrile thrill translated down the line when the wind tried to wrest the kite from my grip. To make something of nothing, to give shape and embody a blunt force I could feel only at one remove, to create and to cull, the string scything through the indivisible wind. On afternoons like this, I still hear the line singing when the wind was at its height and the string pulled taut, a shrill treble that frayed at the edge when the wind slackened off. We were the instruments to be played, lending a voice to the wind, one rooted in the earth.
Thank you.